My name is Dan Monday. I'm speaking to you from uh, Bradford, Ontario, and um, we are people of the Kanukahaga Nation, known as Mohawk people, and we have uh, been uh, starting uh, a search here for the lost children in our residential schools, and we have uh, more information to, uh, to release at this time. And if I may, just read this. I'm sitting here with other uh, members of our, um, our nation, the elders. It says here that archaeological surveys and test dates authorized by the elders of the Ganyakaha Nation have been conducting at the Farmer Mohawk Institute Indian Residential School since October 1 of this year. This past week, while on the grounds of the school, our research, along with Kevin Anet Ramonatsan, who acts with our approval, have unearthed what has been described as human remains. One bone among the 16 uncovered has been identified through preliminary visual examination by a competent archaeologist as that of a young child. This bone sample is described by the same archaeologist as definitely human. A test dig in a 20 square foot area on the grounds of the former Mohawk Institute have revealed a considerable number of bones and buttons which have been confirmed to be part of the children's school uniforms. Large deposits of coal were also found associated with these remains, all at a depth of barely two feet. Several of the bones have been cut up, suggesting that the bodies may have been deliberately dismembered, while other bones were broken. We declare this area on and near the former Mohawk Institute to be a crime site under our jurisdiction. And we will not allow representatives of the Crown or the Church of England or the Government of Canada access to these excavations because of, our, because of their complicity with this crime. These institutions have consistently refused to disclose the evidence they possess regarding the Mohawk Institute and deaths of children under their legal care. And therefore, we are proceeding to charge these bodies with, the, with crimes against humanity in international courts of justice, based in part on the forensic evidence we have uncovered. We now call upon our community and the world to rally behind our efforts in bringing recognition to the remains of children buried in Mohawk Institute grounds and our work to excavate this site. Prior to any possible repatriation of these remains, and because these remains may include children from other indigenous nations, we look to these nations to participate with us in this work and welcome their input. And we urge them to begin their own excavations at the at their local Indian residential schools. We appeal to other nations to send archaeological and forensic specialists and international observers and peacekeepers to our territory to operate under our Mohawk jurisdiction to assist in our inquiry and protect the burial sites until the remains can be accorded a proper burial, according to our diverse traditions. Until these experts arrive to conduct a professional archaeological excavation of these graves, we are temporarily suspending our excavations. As our investigation continues, the bone samples will be subject to further forensic tests and this data of the human remains uncovered at the Mohawk Institute will be prepared in a final report to 
be delivered in the spring of 2012 to the human rights courts and parliamentarian, par parliamentarians in Europe as part of a campaign to bring charges of genocide against the Crown of England, the Government of Canada, the Anglican Church in Canada, and other guilty parties. The Mohawk Institute Inquiry is held under the auspices of Ngwe Ngwe Mohawk Nation and Kevin Ant Ramonantani of the International Tribunal into Crimes of Church and State, who has our full authority and protection. Okay, uh, third day of the second round of digs, and we found today it's definitely a piece of, we believe, uh, human bone. There's the hip socket or a joint socket right there, and a fairly small body, a person probably under three feet or three feet or smaller. And it was near, significantly, it was near the base of this tree. It was about a foot, just over a foot from the base of this tree, and we've often been told that kids were buried under trees because trees were planted where they were buried. And it seems to bear that out. That would have been at around 18 inches below the soil.